Thank you for joining us at the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit at the King Edward Hotel in Toronto, Ontario. Today we have Mr. Ian Chalmers with us, fresh off the airplane from Australia. Thanks, Peter. Nice to be here again. All right, welcome back. It's been a year since we chatted. Just a year, yeah. yeah. I would imagine the past year has been an interesting one for you. Yeah, that's one way to describe it, yes. <laughs> Tell us a little about that. Um, trying to advance the Dubai project through financing. We, we've really done everything that we can do in terms of process development, market development. Uh, we're, we're effectively construction ready, just trying to put the financing in place. And started off with a billion dollar project and now working on cutting that into two slices. So that's a good step forward. And where is the double project? Uh, it's about 400 kilometres northwest of Sydney in a region they call the Central West, which is a strange name for something that's near the East Coast, but that's what they call it. Um, and it's a very civilised part of the world to operate in. Lovely countryside, farming countryside, um, a lot of infrastructure, everything you need, and a good place to live. Now at PDAC in Toronto this year was the first time that I heard about Hafnium. Right. Good old element 72 on the periodic table. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what you're doing with Hafnium. Okay, well it's a long story, I'll give you the shortened version. Hafnium, we were approached four years ago by a large aerospace group to say, what are we doing with the Hafnium in our deposit? And we said, well the Hafnium reports with the Zirconium, most Zirconium products have Hafnium, that's the way it leaves. They said, well if you can separate it and get it out, we'd be very interested. So we embarked on a process to look at hafnium and really then looked at, first of all, the technology of getting it out. And it's very complex, but we've got a process. But secondly, I suppose getting into the hafnium space, we suddenly realised that here was a metal that had this enormous potential with enormous amounts of R&D taking place that show lots and lots of opportunities. So a very interesting product. So what's the global market for hafnium in terms of tonnes? About now, 70 tonnes a year, not big. It's produced, produced from where? Uh, two large zirconium metal companies, ATI in the US and Ariba in France. And they make it as a byproduct of producing nuclear grade zirconium metal. And are the deposits in the United States and France? No, no, they, they buy raw materials from most other parts of the world, mostly China though currently, they buy Zircon, zirconium chemicals from the Chinese to process into zirconium metal and to hafnium. So if I remember correctly, zirconium allows us neutrons to pass through, but hafnium reflects them or shields them? Basically, yes. In a, in a nutshell, zirconium metal is used to house the fuel in the nuclear reactor. So, and the reason it's there, it's the only metal that can withstand the temperatures and the, and the neutron uh, passing through them. The hafnium does the complete reverse. High temperature resilience, but, but it absorbs neutrons. So it's used as control rods in the reactor. So here we are at the Technology Metal Summit. What else can you use hafnium for? That's a really interesting story. And uh, surprisingly, a lot of new developments. The key one right now, and it's been probably our biggest driver for, it, for hafnium for um, the last five years or so, is super alloys in jet engines, jet engine turbines, in, in, um, industrial gas turbine type motors or engines. And what does it add to the alloy? It, it adds temperature resistance. For example, 1 to 2% hafnium and a nickel cobalt alloy in a turbine and that enables that turbine to run it from 1400 degrees centigrade to 2000 degrees centigrade, which means fuel efficiencies, emissions minimizations, better energy use of that material. So that's, that's one of the big drivers. So that's probably the, the backbone of the, the hafnium industry, but the real new developments are in ferroelectric components, dielectric mm -hmm. components, in computer chips and computer data storage and also in uh, thermoelectric, op or your thermoelectric opportunities where hafnium oxide can convert heat also into electricity. I had heard that there was uh, some research being done into hafnium converting solar energy into uh, electrical power for the batteries. That's, that's part of that same process, the, the, the thermoelectric type process that basically is taking heat or, or energy from the sun and uh, doing two things. One, Converting, it into, converting that heat into light energy, which then gets converted into electricity. Now, your company, Alkane Resources, is, is, an, is in an enviable position. You have this really cool technology with this neat new metal, but you're also punching out gold every month. Yeah, it pays the bills. In quarter one, you did about $27 million of gold sales. Yep. yep. You stockpile at surface, and I think you have some bullion in the, in the vault. We had uh, about $8 million worth of bullion sitting in the vault at that stage. So the $27 million probably generated us cash flow of around about $7 or $8 million. So nice to have. Uh, nice to have when you're developing a big project like Dubbo. You don't need to go be back to the market or, or trying to sell your soul to somebody to get, to get funding to go forward. So. It's uh, kept us charging forward over the last four or five years when a lot of other companies have been forced to stop. What's the life of mine for the gold project? 
Um, the open pit stage probably ends towards the end of next year, uh, and then we're developing an underground mine on the basis of that. So another three years after that, but still a lot more exploration potential. We're doing a lot of exploration there now to try and expand it out. All right, what should we look for from Alkane this year? Uh, hopefully a decision to go on Dubbo, and that really revolves around getting all the financing in place and, and pushing the buttons to go. So we're closing in on that. Our belief is that we'll start work in the second half of the year, but that still involves putting a lot of, a lot of the finance together over the next three or four months to, to push that button. Is it possible to do a streaming or offtake agreement for the Hafnium? Uh, could be. Um, certainly offtake is highly likely. We've, uh, we've stayed away from streaming. We've had a lot of approaches on streaming for, the, for all the product output from the project. Uh, stayed away from those a bit because they tend to be pretty expensive. But we think we can normally finance the project through market offtake and also through other debt facilities like export credit agencies, which are effectively national banks. Now you've been with the company since the mid-80s. Yes. And you took over as a CEO about five years ago? Uh, years ago? 2006. Wow, it's been a while. It's been a while. So you've been able to take this project and advance it all the way to production, yep. get the gold, and now you're working on the hafnium. Yes, yes. Good for you. Hey, that's, you know, it's a real accomplishment. You should be proud of that. Oh, look, I am. I mean, I'm certainly, but I also say that I've had a team of people working with me. It's not just me. There are a lot of other people, a lot of the very smart people working with me over many years now to, to get the project to where it is. And we're looking forward to seeing you again next year, and we'll keep an eye on the developments during the year. Thanks, Peter.